Actually, I'm, I'm from Calgary. Did uh, my undergraduate and master's in Calgary and went off to Montreal and then worked for DuPont uh, for 14 years. So, uh, worked in the States and uh, in Spain and in fact uh, uh, in Switzerland as well before coming back to the university. So, I've got, let's say, um, so it's great to be here. In fact, going to uh, school, my dream was to work in one of these towers. So, I'm almost there. <laughs> so, um, Coming back to the university, I wanted to bring, uh, let's say, a, an industrial point of view, since I'm an academic. So the research what we're doing is really what are the needs, how can we address that? And uh, this project came along, actually we've been working in the field with Total, Arkema, Albert Topso. Is, is everyone aware of who Albert Topso is? Albert Topso is a huge, one of the top catalyst companies in the world, producing catalysts for th these types of reactions. Uh, the, I've been working with them since 1996, and in fact, I should be in my lab right now because Howard Topso was doing some experiments in my lab. <laughs> so tonight I gotta go back home and uh, figure out what's going on there. But uh, with these connections, I've been able to develop a team and develop some experimental facilities and develop an opportunity with ME Resources about, uh, about what to do with natural gas. Um, so I've uh, hired a uh, catalysis expert from University of Milan who was awarded the highest uh, award a postdoctoral fellow in Quebec, who was selected by our university for the Banting Award, which is the highest award for Canada for postdoctoral fellows. Uh, Ali Alizade, uh, gas processing, tremendous experience in, in Iran. Uh, Christian Miango, who's got a PhD, chemical engineering, uh, chemistry. And uh, Mandy Dalieri, who's thermal cracking. So we have a core team uh, to, to look at this, to find out, to optimize, to improve. So if we look at some of our facilities, this, this reactor here goes up to 900. PSI, 1,000 uh, degrees Celsius. We've got uh, facilities, uh, mass spectrometers, uh, two or three. Really, the facilities we have are state-of-the-art and uh, a couple million dollars of investment uh, and we're using it, putting it to good use. In fact, uh, this is what I was doing in Spain. We built this, this reactor. Uh, we had uh, made a mistake in the heat transfer and in fact, uh, I was I designed a heat transfer system in order to reduce combustion. We had a combustion problem in the exit. We had to ship in the, uh, the crane that was used in Chernobyl and it dwarfed this reactor that was like 60 meters tall to do a lift of 10 tons. So th this is exciting. And the things that I learned there we're putting, we're putting into to use in our lab. So here is uh, catalysis, again, uh, butane, butane oxidation. So what are our objectives? What do we want to do? Well, we want to meet the needs of waste gas. How can we do that? I mean, are there solutions? And uh, the, the question is, well, why don't we just do what somebody else has been doing? Why don't we do what how the Tufts are doing? Okay. Well, it's uneconomic. Uh, we went around, we've been collaborating, we've got some quotes. We were given a quote for half of the technology, $2.7 million, to do a twin barrel with it. It's not going to happen. So what we've been trying to do is look, develop technologies, look what's available, and then try to uh, use that when we can. But for the heart of this process, we had to develop our own. So what is it? We're reproducing power liquids, gas to liquids, uh, at the same time power. And the objective is 10 barrels a day. Okay, that's our immediate objective, but of course that's going to, with research, with development, we're going to go beyond that. So, the micro-refinery relies on two technologies, okay, Pox. Can anyone guess what Pox is? Partial oxidation, exactly. Okay, right now what they use is SMR, which is steam methane reform. So we'll look a little bit at the difference, and then fissure troughs. Okay, who used Fischer tropes in the world? Germans. Germans in the world. And South Africa. <laughs> because of apartheid, they 
restricted, uh, there, there was a, a complete embargo, so they had to go and build, make their own or from uh, diesel from uh, the mid coal. So this technology is known. It's been developed, it's been used. Louisiana has got uh, Fisher Tropes that was supposed to come to Alberta. Uh, we got in, uh, in uh, commercial facilities in South Africa. Different technologies, as well as Shell in Qatar. Okay, so that's where we're going. That's the types of technology we're going to be looking at. And the, the other objective is well, developing the reactor technology, develop new catalysts, and then integrating uh, this uh, this process. And of course, we're looking for patent uh, proprietary intellectual property. Take out the energy and then go high pressure. So the, the process inherently is energy intensive, is capital intensive. Okay. So um, now. SMR, if you don't need all the hydrogen, you just made it, you know, what are you going to do? Maybe you need PSA equipment to take it out. So there's a lot of steps in there. And the, the idea is that uh, the technology is being used as high, high volumes, 100,000 barrels a day. Here we're not looking at 100,000 barrels a day, so let's take out some of the equipment. Okay? So the other thing is that you use fixed beds, poor heat transfer, and productivity is uh, what we were told when we started, oh, can't do this for anything less than 100,000, uh, well, let's say 1,000, 2,000 barrels a day. So we're looking at stranded gas, wasted gas, 10 barrels, 100 barrels a day. Okay. So this is it. What have we got? We've got natural gas, gas cleaning, uh, compression. This is where it's very different. Whereas in typical technology, you're looking at steam, here we're looking at air. Okay. So we compress it. Coming through the reactor, we've got two reactors together. Again, this patent we've already filed. So this is what's really exciting about this technology. In a single vessel, we can do everything. Okay? We're taking this, going high temperature, heat exchange here to do here. So here's your pox part, here's your fissure tropes part. So we've got a single vessel to do everything. Then we come out, we've got high temperatures, and we've got high temperatures here. So we can generate the electricity to drive the compressors and drive uh, 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 to generate power. Okay. So it's energy efficient because we don't need to burn methane to actually drive the first reaction. <coughs> the reaction is exothermic, it's not endothermic. Uh, yields, we're looking at higher yields. We're, we've quoted C5 plus at 50%, but we'll have C3s if you need LPG. We can, we can do that as well, and we're going to try to go even further. Uh, single vessel, integrated heat exchange, we can optionally produce 30 kilowatts. You see, we've got eight modules there. The mid, the principal module is reactor. Okay? Then we have the compressors that are needed. But then we can actually take and choose what is your site, what facilities do you have already in site on place that we can use and integrate with what we've got. Okay, improve safety. Why would I say there's improved safety? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. You don't want to deal with hydrogen. If you don't. If you don't need hydrogen. You don't. You don't want it. So here we've got reduced hydrogen. If you produce hydrogen in the first reaction, you consume it. So we're not looking at huge hydrogen and the PSA units and, and anything like that. So safety is also uh, improved. So, our looking, we're looking at 100 MCF, uh, MCFD, okay? Uh, and that's what we're looking at now. We already suggested we could go up to more uh, by, let's say, having parallel units. And eventually, what we could do is, in fact, do a bigger. But we're starting right here, right now, okay? So, uh, going down, down the road, we could now sort to scale up. So, the idea is gauze. Monolith, fluidized bed, heat exchanger, and productivity is 10 barrels a day versus 7 to 8 theoretical for SMR, 8 here. Okay? So, mobility, the objective is we can put it on a skin, we can roll it in, roll it out. Okay. That's, that's the beauty of this. We're not going to, you know, a, a, a site that's operating for a couple of days, you want to to uh, deal with the gas, 
expand your cleanup operations, this is what you can use. You've got uh, associated gas, you can use it. Okay, it's really a uh, module, then you can take it out, put it somewhere else. So, where is the innovation? It's the vessel design, the heat integration, the ability to scale up, and to miniaturize. That's where we've got tremendous uh, innovation. Catalyst design, what we're going to be doing, what we've done is so we're in precious metals, metals, mixed metal oxides. We're not innovating everywhere, okay? But here we're going to, we, we've got some catalysts that we've tested. Um, in the design, co-production and regeneration is something that you have to deal with, okay? And so we add, that's part of our, our technology package to make sure that we have stability uh, standard of uh, continuous op uh, operation. What's interesting is we can make alternative products. Okay, Syngas is the, let's say, the building block of many different other products. Methanol, DME, in fact, we can make hydrogen. We don't have to, you know, for, for certain cases, so we could go to, to hydrogen. So, uh, also we could do uh, DME, olefins, uh, ethylene, propylene. So, um, but right now we're concentrating on the Fisher contact. And we've got uh, a patent pending on this technology. So, um, I'd like to give the floor to Bradley Barton, who's uh, got some tremendous experience, 15 years experience in Western Canada operations, who's uh, helping us integrate uh, our technology to the needs of what's going on right now in the field.